Good evening, partners, friends, reformers around the world. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's broadcast. I'm always so honored when people take uh, their quality time to receive from what God is doing in this ministry. I want to encourage you, if you are uh, being equipped and encouraged and strengthened through these broadcasts every Thursday night at 6.30 Eastern, I encourage you, like and share it on your platform so that others can uh, receive from what God is releasing through this ministry. Tonight, we're going to go into part one of a message I uh, ministered this past Sunday at New Day, the Church of High Point, called Faith That Causes Us to understand. It was an extraordinary day on Father's Day Sunday, and uh, I felt it would be important to get this message into your hands. So I want you to you join my faith uh, with your faith and believe that as you listen to this message, that you will receive uh, an equipping, an adding, a strengthening, a hope for the hour that we live in. Father, I thank you so much for my friends around the world. First of all, in Jesus' name, I just declare, God, that you are doing great things in this season. And I declare that as people here, the eyes of their understanding would be open, that their hearts would burn as you open the word to them. Thank you for miracles taking place. Thank you for shift and change. Thank you that no matter when people watch this broadcast, it will be life changing because it is the word of God. So now let's go into part one of faith that causes you to understand. Amen. Amen. I just want to proclaim to you that God is doing wondrous things in this season. Amen. And I don't just say that because I need something to say, but uh, probably for, I think it started in October of last fall, but the Lord started speaking to me about like the next 10 to 20 years in the body of Christ. And uh, one of the things he told me one morning was, and it so encouraged me because the, the truth is, if, if you're going, to, I, I think it's very important to be honest with an evaluation of not only your life, but what's taking place in the world. And personally, I'm seeing things in America that I never thought I would see. They, they were always there, and the elements were always there. They just had now an opportunity to manifest themselves. So I'm seeing, uh, what you're seeing is worldwide a mass antichrist spirit. Yeah. Right. And uh, it, it's, it, it's, it, it, it is, uh, in my opinion, not proper. It's like, oh, it's socialism versus capitalism. No, it's actually the people that want to control everything. They love capitalism because it's benefiting them. So it's crony capitalism, what, what, what they like. So it's not really, you know, YouTube, they're, they're free market. You know, Twitter, these are all private companies. So this is the free market in cooperation with big government that wants to control people. Yeah. But, it, so, but in the middle of all that, um, I am encouraged because the Lord said to me, he goes, the enemy cannot stop the greatest move of God that's Come taking on. place. That's right. So I say that because I, I'm not denying what's taking place. And I also think it's very important to learn how to engage the culture of where you're at. And I felt from the Lord to just uh, um, read part of this word because I feel like it's emphasizing something that the Lord would have us just look at today. And if you, want, if you want the whole word, it's available on our website, uh, just abnersuarez.com, the whole word's on there. But uh, this is part of what the Lord began to say. He said, vision is essential in this season for my people. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Another thing that's really important in the season is to evaluate what your life is producing. And that word vision is really important because what you thought about your life a week ago, two days ago, a month ago, two months ago, that is what is defining your life today. Wow, that's good. Uh -huh. that's so good. Without revelation, without vision, the people cast off restraint, which, which is, it actually tells you how essential that is. And here's one thing that I like to give an honest evaluation of myself. I don't proclaim to be the smartest person, nor the greatest person, but I do claim to be passionate for God. Come on. If I can say one thing, 
for 25 years, I've tried to be as passionate for God. And, and the wonderful thing is when you like decide to be all in on that, you realize how small you are and how big God is and how much you need him. So I've had this vision, and a lot of people, they, they plan this, they plan that. If you have a, this is a key to life, key to life. If you don't get anything out of, out of today, get this out of this. If you have a vision to know God, to encounter God, and to live with him forever, the rest of your life will go well. I honestly believe God cares very little about my ministry. I mean, like, he's like, he's not like up there listening going, wow, I've never heard this before. This is very good. Like, <laughs> people, how, how do you get up here and speak? These are conversations with the Lord that go back 15 years. Like, I'm not a, like, I'm not a public speaker. I'm a friend of God that communicates to people. Many of the defining features of this world system will fail. That's really important because they can only fail because they're cursed. Some people think like, are you, like they get all mad. Like, are you telling me God's going to curse me if I don't give my tithe? Like they get all mad at you. It's like, no, I'm telling you that the reason it will, your life will fail when you don't put God first is because what you're putting your trust in is something that is flawed from the beginning. That's what's cursed. This whole world system's cursed. It's never going to work. Yeah, I'm reading now, mo- most of like, uh, I'm reading these like different things right now just for different assignments I have, but I'm like, they all want to fix things without God. It'll never work. Many of the systems and many of what my people have trusted will fail, but I will not fail my people. I love that. I will not fail my people. That's another good thing to get real deep in your heart. Not just an amen to, but you got to know God will never fail you. Here's a part of walking like this, though. What I've learned is many people are secretly offended at God because he didn't do what they wanted him to do in that season. And so they have this offense towards God that they think he's failing them. And it's very difficult to walk by faith when you're offended at God. Come on, that's true. Because, they, because of unresolved trauma, they connect with God through this lens of pain, lens of unresolved issues that they're secretly mad at God and they're wondering why they can't receive from him when they've judged God for not doing what they think he should do. I will grant, I didn't expect that, but that's true. <laughs> It, it, no, it's just really true. It's something that I've come to observe in people. They won't actually say, I think I'm victimized, but they relate to God from a victim place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Yeah, come on. I'm inviting my people in a renewed manner to see from my perspective. Indeed, this is a, a season that I desire to equip my people to see as never before. I'm telling you, there is this like shortening of that road of walking with God for his people as never before. And it's not even like, you know, it's sin. That, that not, we're not even going to talk about that. It's like, don't look at that. Don't touch that. Don't listen to that. That's the wrong impartation because there is a treasure in God for his people in this season. That's why, that's why uh, your passion for God is not lived in a vacuum. You're, you're passionate for something, but you can only be passionate for one thing. You are passionate for something, but you can only be passionate for one thing. People think loving God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind just happens. It doesn't happen. It only happens out of your choice to agree with God. Come on, yes, yes. Indeed, this is a season I desire to equip my people to see as never before. This is a season on earth of the seer. Indeed, arise, shine, for your light has come. I want to teach my people, according to my word, how to legislate and move in authority from the unseen realm to bring what is in the unseen realm into the scene. Kingdom eternal realities will be birthed on the earth. My desire is that the seers would arise. My desire is that the seers would arise. My desire is that my seers would arise. My desire is that my seers would arise. My desire is that my seers would arise. 
I want to submit to you, too, uh, there is no office of the seer. There is an office of a prophet, and prophets are seers, but every believer should see. Yes. Just like there's no, prophet of the inter- there's no office of the intercessor. I think we've made up a lot of theology to, 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 to describe our dysfunction. I believe people... <laughs> No, I believe everybody, I believe everybody, some people have specific assignments to pray maybe more than yeah, others, but yeah. there is no such thing as an office of an right. intercessor. Yeah. Everybody should pray. Yeah. That's the problem in the charismatic movement. We've limited prayer to women. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just on. say how it is, you know. Come you on, show call a prayer meeting and there's 50 women and the men are like, this is boring. I want to give my people eyes to see what I've made available to them in this season. And what this is, this is really beautiful. And what I've made available to the season and what I've made available to this generation of my children, no other generation's been given. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding are my people's portion. I will teach my people how to walk by faith as, and sight as never before. I will teach my people how to walk by faith and not by sight as never before. I will teach them not to be moved by what they see with their natural eyes, but to only be moved what I'm speaking and I've declared to be true. This is a season on the earth when my people must devour my word as their highest delight and guard themselves against all other influences so that their highest delight is in me. I want to mark my people. Indeed, I want to brand my people with with, with a marking that their greatest delight would be to know and experience my beauty. Now catch this, Uh, there's always a theme that God is speaking, and he has been speaking this today. I encourage you to listen to what was said here today, because it's all coming together as one. They didn't know, but God knows. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the greatest revelation that I'm releasing on the earth is a revelation of my beauty and my name on the earth. When my people catch that, that was a theme, always look for themes, There's no coincidence in God. When my people see my beauty, just like there's no conspiracies, just coincidences. (laughs) It's true, there's no conspiracies, just coincidences. Just happen to come out of a lab. When my people see my beauty, they will represent me as I have ordained them to represent me. I want to uh, focus on a few things, sight and vision today. Faith is what causes you to understand God. Believing and trusting in God is understanding. Everyone is trusting and understanding. Your, Your internal belief system defines how you behave. You don't behave arbitrarily. No one in this room behaves. Now, there's a bunch of factors that go into that, but the way you act is a function of how you believe. How you reacted to COVID defined what you were really thinking in that time. If you cannot understand God, you cannot understand the world. If you do not understand the world around you, your life will always be distorted. The reason that walking by faith is so important is because if you don't walk by faith in God, you are walking through life. The only way I can know how to put it is this. You are wearing a set of glasses that is dirty and the wrong prescription. So look at uh, Hebrews 11. Verse 1, famous uh, chapter on the subject of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Now here it is, the, the, the principle I just emphasized. emphasized. By faith we understand. By faith we understand. It doesn't say you have understanding and then put your faith in it. It is by faith that you understand. A lot of people want to understand and have faith, but faith is the only thing that brings understanding. Now, the reason some of you are looking at at me like that, because the very next point is, faith only functions by revelation, not by your intellect. 
In fact, the life of faith is the freedom to no longer be governed by the five senses. Here's another key part, though, that I've learned in in observation in my own life. You will never produce anything spiritually significant without spiritual discipline. And that is something many Americans do not want to hear. It's not a matter of like, oh, I'm going like, oh, to do it myself. It is this leaning in to dependence upon God, developing habits, because habits are uh, behavior that is done repeatedly that after a while, you're not even thinking about doing it. It is the default response to your environment around you. I kind of, uh, the way the Lord put it to me years ago, it's like, you know, when you first learn to drive, some of you are still learning, I am too, uh, <laughs> you start to learn to drive, right? And you like, you check your, your like, your blind spots and like this and that, and then, you, you know, you pull out of the driveway and then you check out and then you stop and all these things. And now when you drive, you're doing it, but you're not consciously doing it anymore. You're doing it, but it has become a practiced habit that that is how you respond to your environment. So verse 6 So he tells us that by faith, we cannot understand. And then he says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. So here here, here it goes back to a a key idea about the subject of faith. This whole world system is corrupt. It's perverted. It will never work. It will never produce anything because it is all trying. It is all these different philosophies, critical race theory, socialism, all these different things. They are trying to achieve justice and equity and a utopian society. That's actually the phrase that they use without God. Communism even crazier because they deny God and they want everybody to give their stuff away. You ain't never going to get anyone to give away anything without God. In fact, some of you still can't give 10%. No, that's a really crazy idea. We want you to give all your stuff away, but God doesn't exist. You ain't never going to give your stuff away, really, unless God's with you. The reason without faith, <laughs> got quiet with that one, but it's true. Uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God is this. He has all the resources that you need. He has already made provision for the people of God to live upon this earth as he has intended him to, uh, to live. But we must choose to trust him to be the source of all things. It's kind of like this. Uh, years ago, uh, when I finished an undergraduate degree, it's like, you know, uh, my parents graciously, I, I had a partial scholarship and they paid for the other when I, when I finished or at graduation. And they go, congratulations. I remember my dad telling me, happy Father's Day, dad. Congratulations, you've done well. You finished your degree on time. That's what he told me. Because he told me, your degree is four years. Should you choose to go beyond that, you'll be paying the bill. Yes, sir. <laughs> Got it. Got it, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know. Boundaries. Healthy parents have boundaries. So he says, congratulations. We would like to pay for your graduate school. That is the provision of a father. Your father has a provision for you. But here's what many believers do. They go, no, I want to make it on my own. And in effect, They're living in a cursed world because they depend upon themselves more they depend upon God. Now, nobody ever actually wants to say it like that, but that's how it rolls, isn't it? So without faith, it's impossible to please God, and we understand that faith can only operate by revelation. How does the revelation of what God wants to do come? Very simply, it just comes by the word of God. First word. That man ever hears, let's turn there. You still tracking with me? Yeah. First words here. Then God bless them. That's a really important part because everything that God is, he releases to humanity. He says, all the goodness that I am, everything that I am, I am empowering you with in this kingdom. That's exactly what he said. One of the definitions of, of blessing is the, uh, uh, one of the definitions of blessed is the empowerment to prosper. That's another important idea. Prosperity was God's idea, not Kenneth Copeland's idea. (laughs) 
Then God blessed them and said to them, and said to them. So the first words that man hears is the word of God. And they hear that word, and what do they have to do? What does he tell them? He goes, basically says, steward the earth, be my representative. One of the definitions of image there, one of the meanings of image there is shadow. To see Adam was supposed to be a shadow of what God would do in the earth. He was God's representative. And the first thing we know that he does is in uh, Genesis 2, you'll also see that before anything happens on the earth, before any growth happens on the earth, he, uh, he does not place man there uh, uh, before he allows growth to take place. Because one of our number one responsibilities is as believers, the foundation of discipleship is this. Can you be trusted to, uh, to steward God's stuff? Like a lot of people are asking for increase, but they are not doing anything with what's in front of them. So in verse 2, we see, out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field, every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. <clears throat> Excuse me, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, what was not uh, found a helpable comparable to him. So what happens? We know that Adam names the animals. How does Adam name the animals? I want to note to you that Adam did not go to NC State. There is no degree. There is no intellectual academic degree to name animals. What does he have to do? He has to be governed by revelation. You'll also notice there, which is, which is a key, a foundation of walking by faith is this. He does not stop and see, God, am I doing it correctly? In my name, am I right? Like, here's the deal. When you know someone and you know their character, you can speak for them. So a foundation of walking by faith is fellowship and intimacy with God, because you will never trust a God you do not know. I've come to discover that many believers connect to God like a Hollywood superstar. Meaning this, uh, I, I'm blessed, <laughs> When I travel, I see these wrestlers. I like wrestlers. I remember seeing, I'm flying home one morning from LAX. I'm tired. And I go, oh my gosh, that's Chris Jericho. I see him at a restaurant. Nobody's near him. I run up to him. I was like, I'm reading your book now. And I get a picture with him. I don't know him. I only know the character he plays on TV. I know him by the things he's done. I know what he's told me about himself. But I really don't know him. Many believers connect with God by ideas, by concepts, by things that they've heard. There is something, there is a profound difference between someone who knows something intellectually and theoretically about God than someone who stands up and you know they walk with God. That's why you can, you can hear someone, oh, that was, a, that was a nice message. Not disparaging anyone. That was okay. That was okay. All right. Great. And then somebody stands up, they could be five years old, and they talk eight different ways. You're like, we heard from the Lord. Because there's a depth of truth that comes out that you go, that is not an idea to that person. That is a, in, that is a deep connection between them and God that they are speaking for God. You'll see this is a goal of the renewed mind. You'll see in uh, Matthew, the eighth chapter, one of my favorite, favorite uh, stories about Jesus. The man comes up to him. He goes, if you're willing, remember, he's son of God, son of man. He's choosing to live as the son of man. He doesn't say God is willing. He says, I am willing. Why? Because when you know the Father, you don't need permission to act on His behalf. Amen. So He's not asking, but what is He doing? He is trusting 
And and we, we know that revelation doesn't ever go beyond the word of God, but it is progressive and it builds the inside of you like a house. What's the other thing you told? Don't eat of that tree. You, how, how, do you, how can you name animals? I have to put trust in what God has told me. He cannot look at himself and go, oh, I can name animals. I'm amazing. He's got to trust God. How do we know he walked with God? Genesis 3 tells us he walked with God. It's probably the first, they think probably Jesus actually, some people think Jesus comes actually in the garden and just talks with him. Remember what we said starting out. Your life will go well when you put the first and greatest commandment first place in your life. Come on. Yeah. So we know that, and you'll notice how it happens because this whole world system is built on senses. Senses are not bad. We know that. God gave them to you. But the redeeming feature of this world system is the senses. In fact, as a believer, I even think this, like the enemy knows he can make most people ineffective by just letting them react to everything that happens and giving them a Facebook account. Oh, they're really conservative, so I'll get, you know, that guy. And I'll, you know, the, they can argue all day on Facebook, and they do nothing with their life. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's broadcast. I pray it was uh, an equipping, a strengthening, and gave you hope for the time and the season in which we are in. We are living in the greatest time to be alive. If you enjoyed tonight's message, I've just recently released uh, my latest book, called Trust God's Unseen Power to Change the World. It is a resource that will add to what you heard tonight. If you're not a partner with this ministry and you feel connected with what God is saying and doing through this ministry and the vision he's placed on my life as is expressed through for such time as this, I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider partnering with what God is saying and doing through this ministry. And I just want to pray for you just as we conclude this broadcast. But before I do that, I want to thank our partners and friends who are so faithful to literally become the backbone of the call of God placed on my life. We're believing for 300 partners. Perhaps God is uh, calling you to align with us in that way. And Father, and I just see a release, a release of the fire of God. I release to you a fresh filling of the fire of God, spirit of wisdom and revelation. I cancel out any pain in your neck, any pain in your lower back, arthritis, vision problems. I just declare, be healed in Jesus' name, and I release the life of God. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so, so uh, privileged that you are connecting with our ministry. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, we can agree with you. Please email our ministry, info at abnersuarez.com. And at the end of August, August the 27th through the 29th, Outpouring Conference, Wilmington, North Carolina, Global River Church. There's no charge for the conference, but you must register. Registration will be up in the next few weeks. So God bless you, and thank you for joining us tonight.